good morning all of you in today's session we are going to discuss with atomic and molecular masses this is related with the place to chemistry right so uh, these these are the very fundamental things in the chemistry so in addition to all these we already discussed about some of the fundamentals of uh, chemistry uh, which are available on the channel called the world of competitive chemistry in today's session what we are going to discuss the topics related with what is an atom what is a molecule what are the basic differences between atom and molecule how can we calculate atomic mass and what is average atomic mass molecular mass then what's the difference between molar mass and molecular weight and uh, it's a corresponding problems whichever uh, occurred whichever given in the previous examinations so we are going to discuss all these things in today's session let us go into today's topic first what is meant by atom so from the fundamental from the very basic things onwards we are going to start here that's the reason why atom was taken into the consideration atom is considered as the smallest species and it is considered as a chemical element so here atom is the basic building block of chemistry so whenever we consider any atom it is composed of electrons protons and neutrons these are regarded as subatomic particles and moreover most of the space in the entire atom will be vacuum that is empty in nature uh, within the sh short region this nucleus is confined and around this nucleus electrons are revolving in their fixed paths called the orbits right so here let us define atom one more time atom is the smallest particle uh, which is electrically charged particle it is composed of electrically charged particle being it is the smallest unit and it is uh, having a particular elemental composition it is a chemical element and it is regarded as a building block of chemistry right so when we consider carbon as a standard compound over here in case of carbon the central part is composed of the nucleus where uh, protons and neutrons are resided around this nucleus electrons are revolving their fixed orbits right being carbon atomic number 6 composed of six electrons six protons and six neutrons here the central nucleus where neutrons and the protons are laying so it is positively charged around this electrons are revolving which are uh, been given with a negative charge over here and its electronic configuration is distributed as 1s2 2s2 2p2 total six electrons will be there in their orbits right so atom is the smallest particle move on to facts which are relevant to atom most of the atom is in empty space so this is proven by the experiment called rutherford golden foil experiment where they are used to bombard the x rays through the through the atom so some of the rays are moving very straight uh, straightly some other are uh, showing the diffraction and some other completely uh, hitting hitting on the surface and coming back reverting back uh, which are undeviated are not influencing any electronic charge which are partially diffused somewhat near to the electronic charge which are completely reflected back because of hitting on the electronic charge so because of that reason here we can assume we can uh, identify that the most of the space present in the atom is regarded as empty that's a vacuum in nature around 98 percentage of the space in the entire atom will be empty only small region is confined with the subatomic particles like electrons protons and the neutrons the rest of the rest of the part of atom consists of positively charged nucleus it is composed of protons and neutrons around this the cloud of negatively charged is revolving called electron nucleus is small and the dense compared with the electrons being a uh, proton is a uh, heavy when compared to electron that's the reason why nucleus is denser and it is uh, made up of uh, protons and neutrons together and uh, which are the lightest charged particles which are electrons are lightest charged particles in nature electrons are uh, attracted to any positive charge their electronic force in order to make the electrical neutrality right so what are the facts regarding with this atom the atom word the means undivided uh, when the term atom was identified the term atom was invented at the time there is no scope for the microscope 
that's the reason why what they thought this is the undivided particle we, this is the smallest a tiny particle we can't further by bisect into uh, into smaller uh, pieces but further invention of microscope and so many things came into picture so that here atom can be subdivided and we can extract we can um, assume uh, there are some more sub subatomic particles are present which are protons electrons and neutrons but still the name atom is there which defines what i'm divided atoms are the smallest particle that make the element atom identity depends upon its number of protons because based on number of protons only its atom is smaller larger medium that depends upon the number of protons resides in this in its nucleus the three parts of the atoms are proton neutrons and electrons but the space between the electrons and the nucleus is very vast around 99% percentage will be empty in nature so that is a, a vacuum now let us see what is molecule till now we discussed about what is atom and what are the characteristics of atom now we are going to discuss about what is molecule molecule is nothing but it is a combination of atoms when two or more number of atoms of same or different kinds get combined then there is a formation of molecule is possible molecule can be of a simple or complex so either of the kind are possible smaller molecules will be there bimolecular trimolecular polymolecular and the complex molecules also available when you consider a polymer it is a huge molecule made up of n number of atoms got into a repeated combination in that way atoms when combined in a, in a manner so that here molecule formation is possible uh, the type of molecule depends upon the combining atoms what atoms are going to react right so here uh, we have few of the examples related with these molecules uh, you can observe what are it is the familiar example which we are using in our daily life water is composed of two hydrogens and oxygen being it is a bent molecule here you can see it is a triatomic molecule two are hydrogens one is oxygen you can say it is a heteroatomic molecule hetero means what different atoms are getting combined and another possibility will be carbon monoxide carbon monoxide means one carbon one oxygen getting combined and here both are uh, both are, uh, are uh, uh, combined with a triple bond formation and another will be a linear molecule called carbon dioxide where carbon uh, forms two double bonds with the two oxygen atoms it is a linear one in this manner here you can find the molecule which is formed by the combination of atoms that may be a bimolecular trimolecular or polymolecular as well now let us go with a few examples related with the molecules here you can assume you can observe even monoatomic molecules monoatomic uh, represent what though they are not combining with any other they are highly stable in nature they are regarded as a monoatomic molecule so all the noble gases comes in this category so here helium is the simplest example being it is a smaller noble gas in that uh, monoatomic molecular category and another is about diatomic where you can find diatomic denotes what two atoms are getting combined so here two nitrogens are bonded with a triple bond formation move on to any other example here phosphorus when you observe the phosphorus so many types so many allotropes are there you may go with red phosphorus white phosphorus black phosphorus so many kinds are available among uh, all here the phosphorus will be tetraatomic in nature so when you go with hydrogen uh, two hydrogens got uh, bonded hence you can say it is a diatomic nitrogen triple bonded two nitrogens are bonded again diatomic two oxygens are uh, joined with a double bond formation it is a diatomic fluorine two fluorine atoms are linked through a single bond formation called a diatomic chlorine two chlorine atoms are combined with a single bond formation again it is a uh, diatomic bromine two bromines are joined with a single bond diatomic iodine again here uh, two iodines are joined with a single bond again it is a diatomic molecule then move on to phosphorus phosphorus being it is a tetrahedral in nature four atoms are in the uh, uh, regular tetrahedral structure so it is a tetraatomic in nature but all are phosphorus only tetra homoatomic now move on to sulfur sulfur having crown like structure where uh, eight sulfurs are uh, are uh, accommodated in a puckered ring type of structure it is not a straight chain rather it will be a puckered chain right eight sulfur atoms are in a 
uh, ring type of structure where curvature will be there. Eight atoms are uh, located in order to avoid the strain. Now let us see what kind of uh, differences we can uh, observe in between atom and the molecule. Atom is the smallest particle which can't be further divided. So it is the chemical element we can define. Molecule is a combination of elements. It is the smallest particle which is formed by the combination of elements, combination of atoms. Atom does not exist in the free because all the atoms are highly reactive except the noble gases. Remaining all the atoms will be available in a combined form. Molecules exist in free, free state. Except some of the noble gases, other atoms are highly reactive in nature. When you go with the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, or else any P block elements, all uh, are A block elements, all are highly reactive in nature. But the noble gases are, uh, they are highly stable. Molecules are less reactive because already they got, uh, they got reacted, then only molecule form so that it will be less reactive, more stable in nature. Atoms does not have any chemical bond. So in the atomic state, your uh, chemical bond formation is not possible, but atoms in a molecule are held together through the chemical bonds. Atoms may combine based on the different electronic factors that may be ionic, that may be covalent, that may be coordinate covalent, any kind of bond formations are possible. So that's the reason why they are less reactive in nature. Now let us see a uh, uh, brief description about molecule. What is molecule? Molecule is a electronically neutral of uh, atoms joined together by a chemical bond formation. Here you can see oxygen bonded with the two oxygen atoms with a double bond. And the methane is a pentaatomic. Five atoms are there, central carbon surrounded with the four hydrogens with a single bond formation. Caffeine, uh, here is the structure for caffeine. You can find six membered and five membered ring as well. That's the reason why your bicyclic ring formation is present with the more number of atoms. DNA, it is highly complicated. Purines and pyrimidines join together with the bond formation. Hydrogen bonds will be there. Uh, thiosulfur groups also available in this uh, because of those uh, uh, hydrogen bonds that available in the helical twisted structure, DNA, genetic matter. So all these are the part of molecules only. They are combined with either two atoms, five atoms, four atoms, or more number of atoms as well, so that your molecule formation is possible. Atomic mass. Now we are going to discuss about. Till now we uh, discussed about what is atom, what is molecule. Now the topic is about atomic weight. How can we calculate atomic weight? Atomic mass is the quantity of matter contained for the atom of uh, an element. It is expressed as a multiple of one twelfth of the carbon atom, right? So always uh, carbon twelve was taken in the standard in order to calculate the atomic mass, and it is given as one uh, uh, one by twelve. That is one point nine nine two six four six five four seven into ten to the power of minus twenty three gram. So uh, it is measured in the atomic mass units. So uh, this is uh, this is the kind of derivation, kind of uh, Calculation given by the scientist called uh, John Dalton. That's the reason why atomic mass, uh, sorry, atomic weight is also represented in terms of Dalton units as well. Now let us see atomic mass uh, is the mass of atom. Although a kilogram is the SI unit for this one. It'll, apart from this, it can be represented in unified mass, uh, small u, Dalton indicated with DA. And one atomic mass, one unified mass, one Dalton is defined as 1 by 12th of the mass of the single carbon atom at the rest, right? The protons and neutrons of the nucleus account for the nearly all total mass of the atom. So this is the fundamental thing we have to uh, remember. What is that? Atomic weight is nothing but it is the prod, it is not prod, it is the sum of protons and the neutrons. For example, let us go with carbon. Carbon composed with six protons and six neutrons. That's the reason why its atomic mass will be six plus six will become 12. So that atomic weight is the sum of protons and the neutrons. Now let us go with carbon. There is a slight difference between atomic mass and atomic weight. 
Atomic mass is nothing but sum of protons plus neutrons. But atomic weight is nothing but its isotopic uh, elements also taken into the consideration. For example, when carbon was taken, carbon available in two isotopic form, carbon 12, carbon 13. When isotopes are formed, isotopes are found whenever there is a change in the number of neutrons. So here, in case of carbon, number of protons are 6, number of neutrons also 6. In case of carbon 13, though it is very lesser quantity abundance, that is 1% abundance is there, but it is also taken into the consideration. Carbon 13 is composed of 6 protons, but 7 neutrons will be there. That's the reason why these two regarded as a allotro, sorry, isotopes, right? So here, neutron count will be varied for these two. So isotopes of carbon will be 12 and 13. Abundance of carbon 12 will be 99 percentage. Maximum abundance will be there. Carbon 13 will be 1 percent abundance, right? Now let us see how can we calculate average atomic weight for this entire compound. In order to calculate atomic weight of any compound having different isotopes, the formula will be the formula will be uh, its mass into percentage of abundance uh, plus second isotope mass into its percentage of abundance. That means mass of the carbon 12 will be 12 into percentage of abundance will be 99. 99 by 100, it will become 0 0.99 plus. What is the second isotope carbon 13? Whose mass will be 13 into what is the abundance 1%? 1 by 100, it will become 0 0.01. Average atomic mass is equal to isotope 1 plus isotope 2. So isotope 1 will be 12 into 0 0.99, isotope 2 will be 13 into 0 0.9. So it will become 11.88, second one will become 0 0.13. When we take the sum of these two, atomic weight will be considered as 12.01. So this is the slight difference between atomic mass and the atomic weight. Atomic mass of the carbon will be 12, atomic weight of the carbon will be 12.01. There is a slight deviation. Now, it's a formula for the calculation. This is the entire table which used to give the atomic weights of various elements from the element number 1 to element number 30. There is a slight uh, uh, calculation uh, is there. First element is hydrogen where atomic number and atomic mass will be one itself. And uh, second element taken as a helium. So for this helium, 2 plus 2, 8 will be taken as atomic weight of the helium will be 4. For lithium element, so what we are doing here is a trick in order to remember, in order to uh, easy identify atomic weights of all the elements. For first element, hydrogen, atomic weight, atomic number, both are one itself. Helium, atomic weight will be 4. It can be uh, added with the 2. Atomic uh, number, atomic number plus 2, we can add so that it will become 4. For lithium, it will become 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4, it will be 7. So it is odd atomic number. Atomic mass is also odd as well. So here beryllium. So for this beryllium, what we are doing? Atomic weight. Atomic number is 4. So it can be it can be added with the number 5. So 4 followed by 5 so that it is very easy to understand. 4 plus 5, 9 it will be. For boron, it will become 5 plus 6. Atomic number plus the next integer. So that 11, carbon will be 6 plus 6, 12. Nitrogen will be 7 plus 7, 14. Oxygen will be 8 plus 8, 16. 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8. And followed by for fluorine, 9 plus 10, 19. So there is a, uh, there is a strategic trend in this uh, increase in the atomic mass from element 1 to element 10. So first, 1 itself. Second element plus 2, third element plus 4, fourth element plus 5, plus 6, followed by plus 6, plus 7, plus 8, plus 10, plus 10. So, so if you remember this adding factor, so that it will be easy because atomic number is well known. What is the serial number? That is the atomic number. That's the reason why you can calculate their atomic weight. For sodium, atomic number is 11. The addition factor will be 12. It will become 23. For magnesium, 12 plus 12, 24. For aluminium, 13 plus 14, 27. For silicon, 14 plus 14, 28. 
so the general trend will be whenever even atomic number is there almost atomic weight will be even so in most of the cases it will be true in this manner atomic weight is calculated simply atomic weight is the number of proton plus number of neutron right move on to any other segment called atomic weight correction so already pre existed atomic weights are there but based on the practical evidences there is a slight correction was made for 12 elements in the entire periodic table this was given by the international union for pure and applied chemistry commission right this was made on 5th june called the international environmental day a uh, 2018 the iupac commission on the isotopic abundance and the atomic weights so because already we are very familiar that atomic weight is purely calculated based on the abundance of isotopes its isotopes based on that calculation so uh, based on um, this isotopic abundance criteria there is a slight correction was made to the atomic weight this was given by uh, iupac iupac is the standard uh, in order to give the naming and also give assign the properties uh, and the uh, statistical data for individual elements which are present in the entire periodic table right so here for aluminum for example let us consider so initially already established one already existing one will be 26.981 this is the atomic weight right so now it turned into 26.981 5384 these many digits will be there this is accuracy so what is accuracy 26.981 is the existing what happened it is turned into 26.981 there is a slight deviation this is proven this is calculated based on the isotopic abundance because as we are moving in the history what happens accuracy will be rise so that slight modifications are required for already existing fact that's the reason why here this kind of correction was made similarly remaining elements like uh, organ cobalt gold holmium iridium manganese niobium praseodymium protactium rhodium terbium tullium and yttrium for these elements also same kind of atomic weight correction was given all are available over here this was made by iupac commission now let us see general trends of atomic weights for individual elements which are provided with non decimal values integer values are provided over here let us see for hydrogen atomic weight is also one as well for helium it will be 4 lithium 7 beryllium 9 boron 11 carbon 12 nitrogen 14 oxygen 16 fluorine 19 neon 20 sodium 23 magnesium 24 aluminum 27 silicon 28 phosphorus 31 Sulfur thirty-two, chlorine thirty-five point five, organ forty, potassium thirty-nine, calcium forty. In the same way, you can extend this to up to element number thirty. Right now, there is a formula. How can we calculate average atomic weight if different isotopes are available? Just now we gone with the carbon, right? So that will be made simple by using the formula. How can we calculate this average atomic mass if more number of isotopes are available for the given element? In order to calculate, we have the formula: atomic weight is equal to percentage abundance of isotope one by hundred into mass of the isotope one. How extent it is available in the nature? For example, carbon twelve available ninety nine percent. That will be ninety nine by hundred into mass will be twelve. So in that way, we can substitute over here. Then percentage abundance of isotope two for carbon in either isotope will be carbon thirteen, right? Its abundance will be only one percent. One by hundred, it can be taken. For example, into its mass will be thirteen. So in that way, we can substitute in this equation. Percentage abundance of isotope one by hundred into mass of the isotope one. This is for element number uh, isotope number one. Plus. Percentage abundance of uh, isotope number two by hundred into mass of isotope two. This can be extended if more number of isotopes are there. If ten isotopes are there, you have to extend the equation to ten isotopes as well. So this is the uh, fundamental formula. So remember this formula because we have so many problems based on this atomic weight formula. Now let us see hydrogen. For example, hydrogen existing in three different isotopic forms. One is called a hydrogen protium. 
second is deuterium, third is called a tritium. Whose the percentage abundance is provided over here? Ninety-nine point nine percentage protein, zero point zero one percentage will be deuterium. Trace amount of tritium is available over here. Whose atomic weights are uh, provided over here in atomic mass units? When we take the average by using the same formula, it is calculated as one point double zero seven nine atomic uh, average atomic mass. In a similar manner for carbon, oxygen, chlorine, and copper. The values are calculated for carbon. It will be twelve point zero one, oxygen fifteen point nine, almost is equal to sixteen. Chlorine thirty five point four five. This is uh, taken as thirty five point five. Copper sixty three point five four. So these are the values which are called average atomic weights. So few of the examples are provided based on the isotopic abundance and atomic mass. Now let us switch to in another segment called molecular weight. Till now we discussed about atomic weight. Now we are going to discuss about molecular weight. Molecular weight again here the fundamental criteria will be the carbon twelve taken as a standard in order to calculate, and the, the sum of how many atoms are getting combined, the sum of atomic weights taken as a molecular weight. For example, if you consider the simplest atom called hydrogen, whose atomic weight will be One point double zero seven nine four. Two hydrogens are similar, hence it its molar mass will be its molecular weight will be two point zero one five double eight gram per mole. So we are just combining these two because two hydrogens are combined, so their molar masses are combined, and we will get molar mass of this hydrogen molecule. In the similar manner, when you consider sodium chloride salt, table salt, where sodium and chlorine getting combined, so here fifty eight point five. Atomic mass units uh, is the molecular weight of the salt. So in this manner, molecular weight is calculated. Here are the sum of the examples with respect to molecular weight calculation. If you go with carbon containing compound called a methane, methane is called marsh gas, where uh, first carbon, one carbon combined with the four hydrogen atom, one carbon is composed with twelve point zero one atomic weight. And hydrogen atomic weight will be one point zero one. How many four hydrogens are there? That's why it can be multiplied with number four. Now molecular weight of this one will become one into zero, one point zero one into four. So now it is added with the twelve point zero one. Hence the uh, entire molecular weight will be sixteen point zero five gram per mole. In one mole of methane, these many grams of carbon and four hydrogens will reside. Then molecular weight of carbon dioxide calculation. Carbon atomic weight will be twelve point zero one. Oxygen how many are there? Two. So here each oxygen composed of sixteen atomic weight. So two hydrogens, uh, two oxygen. That's why it can be multiplied with two. So it will become, it will become thirty two. Thirty two plus twelve. Uh, it will become forty four point zero double one. You unified mass. And uh, molar mass of water. We are going to calculate for water where two hydrogens combined with oxygen bent molecule will be there. Two hydrogen each hydrogen composed of uh, composed of one point zero one. Now oxygen is composed of what is oxygen atomic weight sixteen point double zero. So here uh, two into one. Two means what two hydrogens. One means what their atomic mass. Sixteen means what atomic mass of oxygen. How many? Only one. That's why two into one. Two plus sixteen, it will become eighteen unified mass units. That is for water. Water molecular weight will be eighteen. When you go with any other molecule called hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide was taken. This is the structure having open book model, right? So here, two hydrogens combined with two oxygen atoms, so that two hydrogens. What is the atomic weight? Two into one point double zero eight. So two point zero one six will be the. Um, Hydrogen contribution, oxygen fifteen point nine into two, fifteen point nine into two. So it will be multiplied so that it will become thirty two. Thirty two plus two, it will become thirty four point zero one four eight. This is the molecular weight of hydrogen peroxide. It is a medicinal compound. In any other is about HCl. How can we calculate molecular weight for HCl? HCl hydrogen composed of one point double zero seven and atomic mass. Chlorine thirty five point four five. When you take the sum of these two, thirty-six point five will be the 
36.5 will be that molecular weight of hydrochloric acid. And uh, neither is about sodium chloride, rock salt, where sodium was taken 22.99. So one atom is there, 22.99. Chlorine again, one atom, 35.45, 35.45. So let us take the sum of these two. It will become 58.44 grams per mole. So this is a simple representation of how can we calculate molecular weight. In order to calculate the molecular weight, we have to know how many atoms are there in the given molecule. So individual atomic weights are known, then only it is possible to add all the elements so that we will get the final molecular weight. Now, let us see a slight difference between the molar mass and molecular weight. Molar mass is represented in terms of, in terms of a Avogadro number, molecular weight just to sum of all the masses of the atom. Uh, molar mass, we have the formula kilogram mole inverse. The units for the molecular weight are not there, but generally it is represented in atomic mass unit. Uh, molar mass is calculated by dividing mass of the substance by amount of the substance. Mass of the substance by amount of the substance was taken over here. In order to calculate the molecular weight, mass of the substance relative to the 1 by 12th of the mass of the carbon atom. This will be a standard taken for the molecular weight determination. So in this manner, molar mass and molecular weight are slightly variated. Molar mass, we have to take one mole. That means a mole uh, will taken into the consideration. In case of hydrochloric acid, molar mass calculations were given here. Hydrogen with 1.007, chlorine with 35.45, just now we got the answer for this 36.460 will be the answer for this one. In case of glucose composed by C6H12O6, six carbons will be there. Uh, individual carbon atomic weight multiplied with six. Hydrogen atomic weight multiplied with 12 because here 12 atoms are uh, contributed for the glucose molecule. Six oxygens contributed for glucose. That's the reason why 15.9 uh, will be multiplied with the six. So these are the individual elemental masses. If you sum all these, you will get the molecular weight of glucose that is 180. So now let us see the fundamental difference between the what is atomic weight versus molecular weight. How can we define atomic mass? Atomic mass is simply mass of the atom. When you take atom into the consideration, whose mass is defined as an atomic mass? Molecular weight is nothing but the weight of, it is the sum of weights of individual atoms which are composed, which are used to compose the molecule. That is regarded as a molecular weight. Chemical species give the mass of the atom. <clears throat> Here, uh, uh, what atom we are taking, that atom will contribute for the mass. Given the mass of molecules, chemical species will give the gives the mass of the molecule. Nature of value, direct value without considering the atomic masses of isotopes. So atomic mass will be the direct value. Number of protons plus number of neutrons will be taken over atomic mass. In case of molecular weight, average value considering the atomic masses of isotopes as well. <clears throat> Determination of atomic mass. By adding masses of the neutrons, protons, and electrons of the atom, uh, in case of molecular weight, adding the average masses of the atoms in the molecule. How many atoms are there? All the atoms taken into the consideration. So, some of all these will be regarded as the molecular weight. Unit for atomic mass will be atomic mass units. For molecular weight, it is uh, represented in gram per mole. Gram per mole. A simplest example, sodium chloride provided 22.9. That is nothing but 23. For chloride, 35.45, that is nothing but 35.5. Molecular weight will be regarded as 58.44. This is the molecular weight of sodium chloride. Now, molecular weight of the water is taken into the consideration where two hydrogens will contribute 2.01. One oxygen contributes 16. 15.99 almost is equal to 16. 16 plus 2, it will become 18.0153. This will be the molecular weight of what? Gram per mole is the representation of molecular weight. Now, we have problems. Still now, we discussed about the topics uh, related with what is atom, what is molecule, what is atomic weight, or what is atomic mass, what is the molecular weight, what is the molar mass, what is the difference between these two? 
and how can we differentiate atomic mass with the molecular mass so all these topics were completed topic representation completed now we are going to practice the problems based on these concepts determine the number of protons neutrons and electrons present in the isotopes that are having medical diagnosis atomic number is 9 mass number is 18 charge is minus 1 if these are the terms provided what uh, what is the what is the requirement to calculate how many protons are there how many neutrons are there how many electrons are there these are are required to be calculated for that purpose how many protons atomic number will be the number of protons atomic number is 9 number of protons are 9 neutral in the sense so protons number is equal to electrons that's the reason why electrons will be 9 and uh, then number of neutrons uh, sorry this is not neutral atom here minus 1 charge is there minus 1 in the sense one extra electron is there one extra electron in the sense here protons are 9 one extra electron means it will become 10 then number of neutrons number of neutrons will become 9 as well because here uh, neutral in case of this atom it is not the isotopic one so that here protons and neutron number will be 9 and 9 itself because mass number from mass number if you subtract the subtract the proton number the remaining will be neutron number so because protons plus neutrons is equal to mass protons are known mass is known mass minus protons it will become neutrons that's why 18 minus 9 it will become 9 9 neutrons will be there being it is mono negatively charged one more electron will be there so here 9 plus 1 it will become 10 electrons so in this way we have to calculate move on to second problem atomic number 43 what is atomic number that is the proton number so protons are 43 then mass number 99 in order to calculate neutrons mass number minus atomic number 99 minus 43 it will become 56 neutrons are 56 what is the charge plus 7 means 7 electrons are less than protons means 43 minus 7 we have to take 43 minus 7 it will become 36 this is a way of calculating how many protons neutrons and electrons are there move on to any other atomic number is 53 protons are 53 atomic mass is 131 131 minus 53 it will be 78 now charge will be minus 1 means a one electron should be added 53 plus 1 it will be 54 so protons are 53 neutrons are 78 electrons are 54 and the next problem atomic number is 81 exactly same proton same number of protons protons are 81 mass number is 201 201 minus 81 that will be neutrons are 120 then charge will be plus 1 means loss of one electron so here 81 minus 1 80 it will be name the element elements in part a b c d so last problem will be we have to identify which element it is atomic number 9 means what fluorine atomic number 43 means what technetium atomic number 53 means what iodine atomic number 81 is thallium in this manner based on atomic number it's simple to identify which element it is so these are the problems purely based on elemental topics subatomic particles which are present in the atom atomic number mass number and charge are provided we have to identify subatomic particles present in the given atom move on to any other kind of problem representation we are going to solve any other kind of problems give the number of protons electrons and neutrons in the neutral atoms of the following there is no charge that's why we have to calculate protons electrons and neutrons these are the subatomic particles now first element is boron atomic number is 5 here there are certain protocols to represent the entire symbol of the given element the element uh, will be symbolized with the uh, alphabet and uh, subscript whichever present at the bottom is called atomic number superscript present as the power is called 
atomic mass. So this is a kind of representation. B represent what? It is the boron. Pi represent what? It is the atomic number. 10 represents what? Atomic mass. This is a way of representation for individual elements in the periodic table. Now, for this atom, how many protons? Protons exactly is equals to atomic number. Atomic number is 5. That's why protons are 5. Electrons. Being it is a neutral. In case of neutral, proton count is equal to electron count. Because neut when it will become neut neutral, number of positive charges compensated with number of neg negative. If 5 protons are there, in order to cancel 5 protons, 5 electrons will be there. That's why it will become neutral. So all the atoms are neutral. That's why proton electron count will be exactly equal. Right. So electrons also 5. Neutrons, atomic mass minus atomic number. 10 minus 5. It will become 5. So for boron 5, 10, protons are 5, electrons are 5, neutrons also 5. Now move on to mercury. Atomic number is 80. 199 is the mass provided. So 80 atomic number, protons are 80. Being it is neutral, electrons are 80. Now, how can we calculate neutrons? Take 199 minus 80. So mass minus atomic number, that will be 119. These many neutrons will be there. Then move on to copper. Atomic number 29, protons 29. Neutral atom, electrons 29. Mass is 63. Minus 29, the difference will be 34. 34 will be neutron count. Carbon 6, proton number 6. Electrons, being it is neutral, electrons also 6. Atomic weight is 13. 13 minus 6, 13 minus 6, it will be 7. It is not 37, it will be 7. So, in this way, we can calculate here. And selenium, 34 atomic number. Protons are 34. Then 77, mass number 77 minus 34, 43 it will be. Electrons being it is neutral, proton, electron both are same. 34, 34. Now we have another problem. This is somewhat complicated and which we already practiced earlier. Based on this atomic weight formula, we are going to solve the problem. An element has the following natural abundances and isotopic masses, 90.92 percentage abundance with a 19.99 atomic mass unit, 0 0.26 percentage abundance with a 20.99 atomic mass unit, 8.82 percentage abundance with a 21.99 atomic mass unit, calculate average atomic mass of this element. So, the element, how many isotopes are there? One is 90% abundance isotope. Second is 0.2% abundance. Third is 8.8. Means three isotopes are provided. Let us substitute in the average atomic weight formula. So, first isotope abundance will be 90.92. 90.92 by 100 into 19.99. Because its uh, atomic mass will be 19.99. First isotope was taken. Plus second isotope. Abundance is 0 0.26 by 100 into its mass will be 20.99 into 20.9. Second isotope completed plus third isotope. Abundance is 8.82. 8.82 by 100 into its atomic mass will be 21.99. 21.9. Same formula just to be substituted the values for three isotopes. Now, it will become 0 0.9092 into 19.99 plus 0 0.0026 into 20.99 plus 0 0.088 into 21.99. Just to be uh, divided with 100 so that uh, these uh, values are obtained. Now let us take the multiplied value of all these and followed by summing. You will get the final answer 20.16 atomic mass units. So this is the answer provided. Calculate the average atomic weight. Three isotopes were added by using the formula so that the final average atomic mass is 20.16. 20, 20 is the atomic mass uh, is obtained for this. Now move on to another problem. 
average atomic mass listed by IUPAC are based on the study of experimental results. Bromine has two isotopes, bromine 79, bromine 81, whose mass is 78.9183, 80.9163 atomic mass unit. And abundances are 50.69, 49.31. Almost equal abundance were determined in earlier experiments. Calculate average atomic mass of bromine based on these experiments. How does these compare to the value given in the periodic table? Right. So same formula we are going to apply over here. How many isotopes? Only two isotopes. Their masses are given. Abundances are given. Let us substitute 50.69 by 100. This is the first abundant one. 50.69 by 100 into its atomic mass will be 78.9. And the second isotope, 49.31 by 100 into 80.9163. So, if we take uh, the calculation of the entire things, 79.88 atomic ma mass units, 79.88 almost is equal to 79.90 atomic mass units. This is exactly map matching with the periodic table value, whichever quoted in the periodic table earlier. So the theoretical and the calculated values both are matching. Now let us move on to any other problem, which is given in the earlier question paper, which a property of the element is always whole number. Whole number means not a decimal value. Now point uh, that values will not be there. Whole number integer values required. Integer value, atomic weight may be decimal, equivalent weight may be decimal, but atomic number never will become fraction. Always it will be a whole number. That's why the right answer will be a atomic number. Atomic volume, sometimes it will be fractional. Move on to another question. Which one of the following properties of the elements are not variable? It, it will not be changed. It will be fixed. That should be identified from the given option. Valency of the elements will be varied. For example, iron exists in plus 2 and plus 3 as well. Iron plus 2 called ferrous, iron plus 3 called ferric. That's the reason why valency variation is possible. What about atomic weight? Atomic weight is the sum of number of protons and number of neutrons. Hence, it will not be varied. Never atomic weight will be varied for the given element because number of protons, neutrons will not be changed for the given element under set of conditions. So it will be fixed. Equivalent weight will be varied. How can we say? Because equivalent weight is equal to molecular weight by valency, valency variable. So that equivalent weight also variable. So that's the reason why the right answer will be atomic weight. It is a non-variable thing. Move on to another question. The modern atomic weight scale is based on carbon 12. Carbon 12 is a standard for the calculation of entire atomic weights of the compounds. Neither question. One atomic mass unit exactly is equal to 1 by 12th of the carbon 12. So it will be taken in the scale of 1 by 12 of the carbon 12. Neither question. Sulfur forms a chloride H2Cl2 and ACL2, where H2Cl2 uh, denoted with a sulfur plus 1. ACL2 denoted with the sulfur plus 2 oxidation states. Equivalent mass of sulfur ACL2 is ACL2. What is the equivalent mass of the sulfur? Here, don't get confused for the entire molecular weight. Rather, they are asking for only sulfur equivalent mass. In order to calculate, uh, first, what is the uh, atomic weight of the sulfur? Sulfur atomic weight is 32. What is its valency? Atomic weight by valency will become equivalent mass. Atomic weight is 32 by 2, it will become 16. Equivalent mass is equal to atomic weight by valency. The charge on sulfur is plus 2. Sorry. Yes, plus 2. That's the reason why 32 by 2, it will become 16. Right? In either question, sulfate of the metal contains 9.87 percentage of metal. This sulfate is amorphous, isomorphous with zinc sulfate 7H2O. What is the atomic weight of M? Metal atomic weight to be calculated. So here, isomorphous means what? Resemblance will be there. Similarity will be there. Now let us see, zinc sulfate 7H2O 
is the compound given for the similarity comparison given metal is unknown that is m so here it resembles with this so that let us indicate metal is existing in the same manner like metal so 47 h2o heptahydrate is given over here its atomic weight is denoted with capital m and molecular weight for this is calculated metal is unknown because uh, we have to calculate we have to extract this sulfur atomic weight is 32 oxygen how many four are there four into uh, 8 8 16 16 into 4 it will become uh, how much 126 So here, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-six. These are known terms. M is unknown. Metal to be predicted. So that M plus triple two can be taken over here, right? Percentage of the metal is equal to M by M plus triple two into hundred. M by M plus triple two into hundred. So here, percentage of the metal is um, uh, calculated in this manner: nine point eight seven. Nine point eight seven is uh, given. That is already known. That percentage is known. Only the thing required is this percentage is known, and these are the terms are known. M is to be calculated. Now we can calculate M over here. For that purpose, hundred M is equal to nine point eight seven plus triple two into nine point eight seven. Now it will become triple two into nine point eight seven. Triple two into nine point eight seven by ninety point one three. It will be. Twenty-four point three. Twenty-four point three is provided for option number C, right? So what we will do? Just a resemblance is given, so that it, let us substitute metal, which to be calculated, and remaining uh, individual atomic weights were taken. All are well known for us. Seven water molecules are there. Sorry, four into sixteen uh, that will become sixty-four. Seven into eighteen because individual water molecule eighteen contribution so seven into eighteen that will become one twenty six. So let us take the sum of these three m plus uh, remaining all that will become triple two. Percentage of metal is equal to m by m plus triple two into hundred. M is unknown. Percentage is known that is nine point eight seven. If you substitute, we will get the final answer metal that is twenty four point three. This will be the atomic weight of the given metal twenty four point. In either question, in a chemical scale, relative mass of the isotopic mixture of oxygen is assumed to be is equal to. So, isotopic mass. Three different isotopes are given over here. Their isotopic uh, relative mass of the isotopic mixture was to be calculated. That is given as sixteen point double zero. Option number B is the correct answer. Boron has two stable isotopes, B ten, B eleven. B10 abundance will be 19 percentage. B11 abundance will be 81 percentage. Atomic masses uh, should appear in the boron uh, periodic table will be. So this is a uh, well known for us. We can go with the formula that is a percentage abundance of uh, first element that is 19 into its atomic weight is 10 plus second element abundance will be 81. Into its atomic weight will be eleven by hundred. So ten into nineteen one ninety, eighty one into triple one eight ninety one by hundred. So it will become it will become one eight. So eight plus nine eight plus one plus one. So it will become ten ten eighty one by hundred. So if you go with the calculation, so these two zeros compensated here decimal point will be. Obtain ten point eight one will be the right answer. Ten point eight one is provided in the option number one. If you know percentage abundance and atomic masses, average atomic weight is calculated by taking percentage abundance by hundred into its atomic mass plus second isotope percentage abundance by hundred into its atomic mass. So if you substitute, you will get the answer. A is the correct answer for this question. Total number of atoms represented by compound copper sulfate pentahydrate. Cu is for four five H two O is called copper sulfate pentahydrate. If you uh, total number of atoms, if you want to calculate total number of atoms, let us go with one by one. Copper, Cu copper is one atom. Sulfur again one atom, two atoms completed. How many oxygens are there? Four oxygens are there. So two plus four total. 
six atoms over sul copper sulfate. For water molecule, each water, water molecule have three atoms. Three into five, three into five, 15. 15 plus six, 21. So 21 is the right answer. So individual atoms we have to calculate. So atoms are calculated by taking their superscript and subscripts. Copper is one atom, sulfur is one atom, oxygen four atoms, five into two, 10 hydrogens, five oxygens. If you take the sum of all this, you will get 21 as the final answer. Option B is the correct answer for this question. The number of atoms in 4.25 grams of ammonia is approximately, how many atoms are there? We have to calculate, right? So ammonia, molecular weight is 17. 17 grams of ammonia contains 6 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of ammonia. Okay. But the given, within the given problem, 4.25 grams of ammonia. If 4.25 grams of ammonia is there, how many molecules will be there? So this is called Avogadro number, mole, mole, concept, mole concept it is. 17 grams of ammonia contains one mole of, uh, one molecule of ammonia that is the Avogadro number of uh, ammonia. But within the problem, 4.25 grams of ammonia is given. That's why for this, how much it will be? Cross multiplication, you will get or uh, you will get 6 into 10 to the power 23 by 17 into 4.25, right? 4.25 into 6, point, 6 into 10 to the power 23 by 17. Cross multiplication, simple. So here, after getting, after calculating number of atoms will become, see, very simple, it will be 4.25 into 4. 4, 4 is a 16. Denominator 17 is there. These two get exactly cancelled with the denominator. Only the term left over will be 6 into 10 to the power 23. These terms will be cancelled over. So here, 6 into 10 to the power 23 is... Uh, the right answer that is provided in the option number D. So in this manner, we can go with the calculation in order to calculate number of atoms. Mass of the molecule of the water will be, in order to calculate the mass, just like in the, uh, this, uh, this problem, same will be applied over here. Water is composed of H2O, whose molecular weight is 18, and how many molecules? 6 into 10 to the power 23 will be there for one water molecule. So, 16 grams contains 6 into 10 to the power 23 molecules. For one molecule, how many will be there? Again, cross multiplication. One molecule, how many? 1 into 18 by 6 into 10 to the power 23. 18 by 6 into 10 to the power 23, it will become 3 into 10 to the power minus 23. So, 6 is 3 is 10 to the power 23. If you go for uh, numerator, it will become minus. 3 into 10 to the power 23 will be the grams. In order to convert grams into kilogram, what we will do? By 1000, we have to do. So, here it will become 3 into 10 to the power 26 kilogram. So, this is the way of calculating. So, 3 into 10 to the power 26 is provided in the option number A. The mass of water molecule will be 3 into 10 to the power minus 26 kilogram. Neither question, 1.24 grams of P is present in 2.2 grams. P denotes what? Phosphorus. So, 1.24 grams of phosphorus is present in 2.2 grams of which molecule? So, for that purpose, let us go with the trial and error process. In that case, I am going to choose the option number 1. First option number one, P4S3 was given. For P4S3, uh, P4S3, 31 into 4 by 124 was taken. 31 into 4 by atomic mass into how many phosphorus? 4 by 124 total molecular weight was taken over here. 31 into 4 by 124 uh, in this molecule. 220 grams of P4S3 because this is the molecular weight of entire P4S3 molecule, right? So here, 1.24 grams phosphorus present in. So 1.24 grams of phosphorus present in, again, we, go, we have to go with the cross multiplication. 1.24 into 220 by this remaining value. So 
if you if you substitute all these values it will become 220 into 1.24 by 124 so what exactly so here 1.24 124 will be there so these two get exactly cancelled here one uh, 0.1 will be left over 220 into 0.1 it will become 2.2 grams 2.2 grams so here for option number 1 it is uh, satisfied that's why for this question option number 1 is the correct answer now let us go with another problem the weight of 1 into 10 to the power of 22 molecules of copper sulfate pentahydrate will be so weight of 1 into 10 to the power 22 so one molecule of copper sulfate pentahydrate is equal to copper atomic weight is 63.5 sulfur is 32 how many oxygens four each oxygen contributes 16 16 into 4 64 five water molecule five into 18 90 so these are the individual atomic weights now let us take the sum of all these it will become 249.5 that is the molecular weight of copper sulfate pentahydrate 6 into 10 to the power 23 molecule has 41.58 into 10 to the power 1 41.58 into 10 to the power 1 so this is the um, this is the final answer we will get how can we get let us see one molecule contains 246.5 then 1.1 into 10 to the power 22 contains how much that will become 1 into 10 to the power 22 into 249.5 by 6 into 10 to the power 23 that is nothing but one molecule is nothing but 6.6 6 into 10 to the power 23 have a good number so that's the reason why 1 into 10 to the power 22 by 6.6 6 into 10 to the power 23 into 249.5 can be taken. Here you can clearly observe that 10 to the power 23, 10 to the power 22, both get cancelled. Here one more 10 will be there, right? So if you go with the proper calculation, it will become 249.5 by 6 into 10. So after the calculation, the final answer will be 41.58 41.58 into 10 to the power 1. So The weight of one into ten to the power twenty-two molecules of copper sulfate pentahydrate will be four point one five nine grams. So all options are given with the same answer, but only the difference is decimal point where we have to indicate the decimal point. So for that purpose, the simple way of calculating will be we have to cancelize these tens. So the ten only ten will be left over. That ten will be taken as a Ten inverse. So from denominator to numerator, it will become ten inverse. When you go with the calculation of this one, calculation of this one, uh, uh, what it will become? Six uh, cal uh, six uh, cancellation. We will get forty one point five eight. So forty one point five eight is obtained. That will be converted into grams. That is four point one five eight. So. 4.158 is provided only in the option number C. Now, which of the following represent the least number of molecules? So we have to go with the calculation for all the elements so that where the least number of molecules are there, we can calculate. So if you go with the calculation for one element, it will be very clear to us. So here the element is provided: water, methane, calcium hydrate, nitrous oxide. Hydrochloric acid. So let us go with water first. Six point zero two three into ten to the power twenty three molecules contains eighteen point zero two grams of water. Then twenty grams of water. How many molecules will be there? Number of molecules we have to calculate. So here eighteen grams one molecule. Twenty grams how many molecule? So twenty into six point zero two three ten to the power twenty three by eighteen it will be seven point three five. Seven point three five for water for calcium hydrate nine point seven three nitrous oxide thirteen point zero six HF twenty five point two methane thirteen point zero seven. Among all which is the least value thirteen twenty five thirteen nine seven seven will be a least value that is water provided in the option number A. Option number A is the right answer. Move on to another question. The mass of the molecule of water will be. 
just now we got the calculation for the entire thing 3 into 10 to the power minus 26 kilograms because we have to substitute Avogadro number and um, uh, 6, point, 6 into 10 to the power of 23, 18 grams will be there for one molecule, how many? So just going with this calculation, grams value is obtained, but can be converted into kilogram by dividing with the 1000, so that 3 into 10 to the power minus 26 kilogram is the right answer. By this, we uh, completed the entire calculation, entire concept of atomic and the molecular weight, atom and the molecule, based on problems as well. Hope this session will be helpful for your preparation. Thank you very much for your consistent listening. Thank you one and all.